Hello, my most amazing artists. Today, we're going to be listening to and looking at a book titled You Be You by author and illustrator Linda Krantz. What I love about this book by Linda Krantz are the illustrations. She took rocks and painted each rock that you'll see in the book to look like a fish. And no two fish or rocks are alike. Let's check out You Be You by Linda Krantz. You Be You by Linda Krantz. Adri bounced. He glided. The expression on his face was pure joy. He had been out all day exploring, and now he was swimming home. As he made his way through the ocean waves, he couldn't help but notice that... Some fish swim left. Some fish swim right. Some fish swim in a circle. Some fish swim in a line. Some fish swim up. Some fish swim down. Some fish swim quiet. Some fish swim loud. Some fish are colorful. Some fish are plain. Some fish look different. Some fish look the same. Some fish are big. Some fish are tiny. Some fish are smooth. Some fish are spiny. Some fish swim high. Some fish swim low. Some fish swim together. Some fish swim alone. Some fish are red. Some fish are blue. Some fish swim in the sunshine. Some fish swim by the moon. Mama and Papa beamed when Adrian arrived. He was excited to tell them what he had discovered in his travels. Mama and Papa listened eagerly as he told them about all the fish that he saw. There are so many of us, Adri said. We all have something special that only we can share. Papa agreed. We can learn so much from each other. He smiled. There are millions of fish in the deep blue sea. That's what makes the world so colorful and beautiful. Life is a grand journey, Adri, Mama said. You be you. What I love about that book is how it describes us. It said that all of us are different, and yet we can all learn something from each other. And that's so true. Today, we are going to be creating our own unique fish. We will eventually put all of our fish together to make one big, beautiful ocean for us all to swim. So let's get started on making our own unique fish that's a reflection of our own awesome self. Let's create our own UBU 
fish. All of us are different and unique, so all of our fish will be a reflection of that idea. So what you'll need to do is go shopping at the store. When you go shopping at the store, you'll need to get one of these really cool pieces of paper that have been painted. You can get any one you want. Find one where you really like the colors. The other thing you'll need to go shopping for is a Sharpie. Of course, the first thing you're going to need to do is write your name and teacher code on the back. You probably will want to do this with a pencil, not a Sharpie, because as you know, a Sharpie might bleed through. So don't do what I just did. Use a pencil. Now I'm going to use some of the elements of art to create my masterpiece. I'll be using lots of line, shape, and color, baby, color. Your papers, because they've been painted, they also, some of them have some really great textures on them. So once you have your name and teacher code on the back, the first thing you're going to want to do is trace an eye. The reason we're going to trace an eye is because we want it to be nice and big. This will be the outside shape of the eye. So make sure you do that first. So I'm holding it really still so it doesn't wiggle and I'm tracing slowly and carefully with my Sharpie going around the edges. Oop. Finished with my circle, now I'm going to add the parts of the eye. But before I do that, I need to decide, do I want the eye open? Do I want it half closed? If I did want it half closed, I would draw a horizontal line going across. I want my eye open, so I'm going to draw a nice big circle. This circle will be the iris. The iris is the colorful part of the eye. And if your drawing isn't quite perfect, don't worry about it. Nothing is perfect. In fact, that imperfection is what makes it unique. I'm going to draw the pupil next. That's the black dot that everybody has that they see with. If you want to draw the reflection, then divide that half dot in half and only color half of it. All right, now I have a little reflection in the eye. Before I start to add color, I'm going to finish my design. My next step will be to add the mouth. There's lots of different kinds of mouths you can make. You're looking at the side view or the profile of the mouth, and the first thing I'm going to draw is that center line of the mouth right there. So I'm gonna draw that first. It can be any kind of line that I want. If I want the mouth to be open, then I would draw another line like that. Notice how it can go to the edge of your circle or not. Notice how this line stopped. Now I'm going to make the top lip. So I'm starting here, going up and down, and then I'll do a bottom lip here, going down and up. And if I wanted to add a little line for a cheek, boop, there, I can do that. But like I said, you're the artist. Each one of these will be different and unique. You do what you want to do. The next thing I'm going to add, because I know it's a fish, I'm going to draw a line for the gill. And now that I've got that line, I can either add another line doing the same thing, that's called parallel, or I can start to use lines, 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 and shapes to my design. So I think I'll add another line I will be coloring these in with oil pastel. Oil pastel is really great at coloring, but not very good at coloring small shapes. So I'm trying to draw my shapes. Now I'm creating a zigzag nice and large. So I'm going to finish my design, and then we're going to talk about color. When you get ready to color, you might be coloring with oil pastels, you might be coloring with something else, but whatever you're coloring with, you know, of course, you're going to be coloring as neatly as you can. So I think I'll start with, I don't know, maybe I'll start with this nice dark blue. And if I go outside of my lines, that is okay. It's not always easy to color in these small spaces with oil pastel. And if I see any oil pastel boogers, then I just blow them off. I don't want to wipe them because you guys know that will make it smear. I have this teeny 
tiny little orange. I think I'll squeeze him in. So I'm trying to add color, baby, color, and I can create patterns. Right here, I'm creating an A, B pattern if I wanted to. Pattern is one of those principles of art. Principles of art, remember, are what are like the sugar and spice to making art. They just add a little bit more to make your artwork more awesome. So if you wanted to create patterns, you can. That also adds rhythm to your work of art, but you don't have to. You are the artist, it's up to you. Sometimes you'll notice that the oil pastel shows a little bit of the color underneath and that's okay. When you can see a little bit of the color underneath, that's called translucent and that can add a really cool effect to your work of art. When you're finished coloring, you're going to need to go back over your Sharpie lines, but not with a Sharpie. If you go back over your Sharpie lines, you don't want to use a Sharpie because that could damage the Sharpie. I'm gonna finish coloring and then we'll talk about going over those I'm lines. I'm all done coloring. I want you to notice that I decided to leave this part white, but on this fish, because it wasn't white, I had to color it white. That part of your eye is almost always white. That is called the whites of your eyes. So that's why I left it that way. Now the only problem is with my beautiful coloring job, I lost some of the black outline. So now I'm going to use a black oil pastel and this is my final step. I always use black oil pastels last because you guys know that if you try to color on your artwork after you've already added black oil pastel, it can smear. So now that I'm finished coloring the whole thing, I've got my black oil pastel and I'm just tracing over my Sharpie lines, making them more bold. I'm using what's called emphasis. I want to emphasize my Sharpie lines. Again, emphasis is a principle of art. It's one of those sugar and spices that I'm adding to my work of art to make it all the better. So now I'm slowly and carefully going over all of those lines to emphasize them. And I'm making sure that even if I see a little piece sticking out, I don't take my hand and wipe it because you know that will make it smear. All right, guys, when you're all finished, you'll probably need to wipe off your hands with a baby wipe and join me on the floor. But before we do that, in case you go to your seat and you forget the directions, you know that the first step is name and teacher code. Second step, trace the eye so that it's nice and big. This sheet will be on your table, not because I want you to do the same thing, but because I want you to be able to remember all of the steps. Don't forget that when you're coloring, you'll want to make sure not to smear and that your final step will be to go over all of your Sharpie lines with a black oil pastel. If you need some more ideas, there's an idea sheet on your table. You could have a sleeping fish, a fish wearing glasses, you could have a winking fish, you could have a fish that's really excited or a fish that's really surprised. It's totally up to you. All right, now let's go get started.